Okay, so now back to the graphs. We're still talking about first order reactions. We have these two equations that we just learned about, which by the way, I do wanna show you why these are exactly the same thing. And again, in the back of your textbook, there's review of logarithms. So if you can't remember the log rules, go refresh. Uh, it's a handy thing to know. All right, so the way that this works is there's a rule of logarithms that says, um, so effectively, if you integrate this, you're gonna get this equation. And there's a rule of logarithms that says, if you have a function that is division inside of a logarithm, you can separate it by making it into subtraction. This is a rule of logarithms. So that's where this comes from. So basically you go ln of the top minus ln of the bottom. The other thing that I wanna point out is this zero means beginning conditions. It's um, referred to as A naught or whatever the reactant's called, naught. So zero means not. That's your starting concentration, right? This is the concentration after some amount of time has elapsed, however much time. Um, and the time goes here. So like, say we have a reaction that I start out with one molar that goes there. And I let it go for five minutes. Then over here, we can solve for the concentration after five minutes. Okay. This one on the right might be a little bit more familiar to you because this one is related to something we learned in high school um, about radiation. Um, it's just called radioactive decay. As it turns out, radioactive decay is a first order process. So if I double how, mu how much stuff is there, I'm gonna double the length of time it takes to react, basically, okay? Um, so when we plot the zero order graph, A versus time, we find that it is not linear. When we plot ln of A versus time, we find that it is linear. And the reason for that is because if I rearrange this equation here just a little bit, we can put it into the format Y equals MX plus B, which is a line. So the way to do that is you just add ln uh, of whatever you started with to both sides. So you get it into the format ln at whatever time equals negative kt plus, I added because it's a subtraction over here, plus your beginning concentration. So that has the format y equals mx plus b, which means on the graph, y is concentration across all possible times. Um, m is negative k again which is why that's a decrease, all right? And let's see, I need a new color. X, X is time. And of course the intercept, the B, I hope you see it by now, the B is your initial concentration. So when we look on this, this is where we started at, that's our initial concentration. And you can use this graph to find the concentration at any time. Very, very handy. You can just plug in whatever your time is here in your equation and find ln of a, and then you can undo the logarithm. So that's first order reactions. They're really common and it's really important to understand those. Okay. Here is an example. So the half-life equation, it, it comes from, this is one that you're provided with on your formula sheet in high school chem, but it comes from that integrated rate law. And they don't go over that because as soon as you say calculus to high school students, most of them run away. But this is, this is why scientists need calculus, one of the reasons, one of many reasons. So here's what we're gonna do. Here's our equation, okay? Ln at any time. And this just comes from integrating k equals or rate equals k times a. This is all inside of that logarithm, by the way. I know it's kind of sloppy, but. So we have this equation. And what we're gonna do is it says, substitute where a at t1 half, so t1 half 
is the time it takes for half of the sample to decay. So that's what we call half-life. You can think of it as half of a sample to react, or but in the case of radioactive decay specifically, it means it's changing um, the nuclear structure. All right, so what we're gonna do is say this is T1 half, which means that our time our concentration has to be the same, our concentration at time T one half, right? So these subscripts are the same. It's important to know that this definition for half-life applies mathematically. So the concentration after one half-life is equal to half of what you started with. So here we go. Here's our substitution. If this is true, oh, that's not crossing that out. What we end up with is half of the initial concentration divided by the initial concentration, right? So I substituted A sub T half for the fact that that means half of my initial material is gone. And the negative T one half stays. So now this is why it's magical to have these definitions. You don't have to know how much you're starting with in order to figure this out because the amount of initial material cancels because we are defining how much material is left based on what we start with. So half of it is left. And so you end up with ln of one half equals negative K T one half. So this is the same K from the rate law. So you could use a graph to find it and then you can plug it in here. And so you can figure out, this is just a number by the way, you can put it in your calculator, super friendly, don't be afraid of it just because it's a log. In fact, some places don't even tell you that it's actually a logarithm and they just give you the value. So I'll do that over here. So all I did was go ln of one half and you get negative 0.69 equals negative K from the graph times the half-life. So if you have a graph of the reaction, you can plug this in and you know that it's first order. This only works for first order, but you just plug in the K and you can find the half-life. Okay, so if you've ever looked at half-life times, some of them are ridiculous. Like they'll be so, so fast. There's no way we could have measured those kinetics. Say like 10 to the negative five seconds, right? Really fast. Some of them will be billions of years long. Nobody is sitting there measuring the amount of material for a billion years to be like, okay, it's been two billion years. Now we have half the material. That's the half-life, right? Now, we use the method of initial rates. We get a graph and we apply the K. The method of initial rates means we only have to measure it in the beginning of the reaction. So that's the beauty of it. Um, and then you can co compute the half-life using this equation. Very, very elegant. I love that. 